two, three, four. Please join, stand and join us in song. I'm casting my cares aside. I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hand. sound. All right, we welcome you in, whether you're here in the sanctuary or out on the line. Um, all of us, I see we all broke out some of the dresses today, the short sleeves, the tank tops. It is definitely very warm today. So we're glad you're here in the air, nice and cool. We're going to continue in worship. Um, just a little quick announcement. Um, if you could all stay after service, we're going to have a special announcement. So we are going to continue with our next song. This is a pretty um, requested song for us. Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of 
your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. song, Zach. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We try to um, match the um, songs as best as we can to the scriptures. Um, sometimes it works and sometimes there's just nothing out yes. there. So um, I think Michelle did a little research on this song. Well, Tam actually gave us this. So Tam is giving us the message today. And I yes. asked her what song she wanted to sing. And she said, oh, I've got some ideas. <laughs> well, this is a little out of our wheelhouse, but it's a lot of fun. I hope you'll clap. I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, uh, hopefully we can do it justice. <laughs> it, it fits perfectly with what, with what Tam's going to be talking to us about today. Oh, I'm singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Martha, don't you moan. Martha, don't you moan. Listen to me, Mary. Mary, don't you weep. Martha, 
Papa, don't you mourn. Papa, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. They got drowned in the sea. Drowned in the Red Sea. Well, Jesus said, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Your little sister don't have to mourn. Papa, don't you mourn. Can I get a witness to say, Mary? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Martha, don't have to mourn. It may be somebody sick today. Mary, don't you weep. Somebody here ain't got no home. Martha, don't you mourn. But Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's they army. got drowned in the sea one drowned day. In the red sea. And Jesus said, Mary, oh, Mary, don't you weep. Your little sister don't have to mourn. Oh, Martha, don't you mourn. Well, if I could now, if I could now, I want to tell you that I surely would now. Surely would. Stand on the rock, my brother. Stand on the rock. Stand on the rock. Because Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's army, they got drowned in the sea one day. In the red sea. And Jesus said, man. said, Mary, oh, Mary, don't you weep. What do you say, Mary? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. There ain't gonna be no more weeping oh, around Mary, here. Mary, don't you weep. Cause Pharaoh's army, oh, they Mary, don't you weep. And Moses, he stood on oh, that rock. Mary, don't you weep. There ain't gonna be no more weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. No, no, no more weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you let me hear from my brother. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. And how about my sister? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. There ain't gonna be no more weeping oh, around Mary, me. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. So, hey, hey, Martha. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. I said, how about you, Martha? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Jesus said, Martha. Don't you have to mourn? Martha, don't you no more. We gave it a try. Okay. Good morning. I am Sat Daly. He has. That signal's coming from outside the church and comes in, so we're kind of at its mercy. Well, we can do it some other time, certainly. All right. Good morning. I am Sad Daily. They, these are your announcements. Wednesday, June 28, Coffee at the Haitian, host by Steve and Lisa Bromley, 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. at 180 Columbia Center Drive in Columbia. Everyone is welcome. Sunday, July 2nd, Howard Steele will be delivering the meshes at Bethany. Thursday, July 6th, Ladies Supper Club at the Old Spaghetti Factory sign-up sheet it's on the connection tables in the Norax. Wednesday, July 19th. <coughs> Wednesday, July 19th, New Book Club, Lunch and Book Review at Bethany I knew. The book is The Music of Bees by Eileen Garvin. Lunch is provided. Everyone is welcome. RSVP to Evelyn Scheinberg. Wednesday, August 2nd, Even Book Club at 6.30 p.m. at Bethany. The book selection is Book in Places by Tracy Clark. Point of contest, Susan Hikins. Everyone is welcome. VBS volunteer near. Volunteers are near to land and assist with craft storyteller, group layers, and game and snack assistance. Sign up, she eat, locate in the lobby. Need someone to do face painting Saturday, August 12th from 11 to 12.30 Hoodie. Contest Susan Hankins. Additional opportunities on the connection table. 
You are welcome to bring the church cans of soup and chili, boxes of mac and cheese, and boxes of granola balls. Thank you. Sign up to be a member of the New Bethany Church. Sign up to help with work at the New Bethany Church. Volunteers are near. Enjoy worship. Hello. Good morning. Morning. How are we doing this morning? Good, good. Love to hear it. All righty. Let's bow our heads in prayer for our opening prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing us together on another beautiful Sunday to hear your word at Bethany Church. We pray, Lord, that you open our hearts and our minds to the message and that you show us and help us to put our focus on you above all else. In your name we pray. Amen. It happened. So, just a little message about that. So, you're probably not thinking about school right now, are you? Oh, come on. You're not nervous at all about new friends or new teachers or anything like that? No? No, oh, I love your necklace. Very pretty. Well, you know, Cassidy, you might have experienced this. Were you ever nervous about going to middle school at all? Yeah, what were you nervous about? I was nervous about like the new, like the brand new school because I would actually be having to switch schools since I was like going into a higher grade. Brand new school, I could see that. Well, I've discovered that when you get in fifth grade, I don't know if it's true here, it was where I taught, you get a locker with guess what? A combination. Do you have one of those? You do? Were you nervous? I was nervous that I'd be late to class if I didn't get it right. Yeah, that is one of the most anxiety ridden things that a middle schooler experiences is that combination lock. Can you believe that? I, as a teacher and as a secretary too at one time in a junior high, I had students in tears over that. That was anxiety. That was true anxiety, that combination lock. Oh, you got an owie. You do. Well, we have somebody in the Bible, too, that was very anxious. Her name was Martha. She had a dinner guest coming. Can you guess who that dinner guest was? Who? Jesus. It was Jesus, yes. I would be nervous if Jesus was coming to my house for dinner, right? So she was very busy, very busy trying to prepare the meal. And her sister, Martha, wasn't helping her at all. Martha was sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him teach. Well, Martha got fed up with it all. And she said, she went to Jesus and she said, Mary isn't helping me at all. Can you ask her to help me? And this is what Jesus said to her. It came from Luke 10, verses 41 and 42. This is what Jesus said. You can probably kind of picture it in your mind. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So when you get anxious about something, maybe that combination lock or something that happens at school or maybe on the playground or just every day, I want you to focus on Jesus. Can you do that this week? When you get anxious about something, focus on one thing. Focus on our Lord. Let's pray this morning. Ellie? Okay. <laughs> That's fine. We all march to our own drummer. <laughs> all right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for these children and ask your blessings upon them. Help them when they worry. Help them to focus on you, that you guide 
and that you are with them in everything they do. We just ask this all in your name. Amen. All righty. Uh, we want to welcome everyone in the sanctuary to Bethany Church here in Columbia, Illinois. And then we also want to greet our online family with a warm greeting as well. We would love to have you come and to visit us inside the sanctuary. But otherwise, we would invite you to fill out a digital car, connect card. Uh, we certainly want to hear from you. And you can go to connect.bethanyonthehill.org in order to do so. If you would like to send us a love offering or if you would like to uh, to send us a gift we have ways to give you can text and give at 618-205-6880 or you can certainly give in person we welcome you to come and to sit in the pews with us or you can go to give.bethanyonthehill.org uh, and of course the mail still works the old traditional mail uh, and you can mail that check to Bethany Bethany Church, 1608 Hilltop Road, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. We want to thank you in advance for your generosity, and let's bow our head in an offering prayer. Lord, we ask that you would bless those financially, Lord, that are willing to give, Lord, those that are cheerful givers, Lord, and anything that they send, Lord, that would be too wonderful for words to say, and we bless them, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to begin uh, with our sermon this morning, and I'm kind of waiting for some slides. I uh, don't see anything yet, but my name is Tamara Weary. Uh, today is June the 25th, 2023, uh, and I will be giving the sermon this morning. And as you can see, our topic uh, or the title is called Come Help Mary Sit. And it might sound a little odd, but before we, you know, we get done, you'll catch on. Uh, again, my name is Tamara Weary. Uh, I also do a CARE Bible study blog. If you would like to connect with me, you can do so at carenrcnesl.wordpress.com. Thank you, Steve. Okay. All righty. So here we are sitting at Bethany Church in Columbia, Illinois. And Bethany Church in proximity to the big city, which is St. Louis, is about 27 miles or about 30 miles from downtown St. Louis. And today our setting is going to take place in a small village called Bethany as well. And that uh, small village is located about, about half an hour, half an hour to 45 minutes on foot now, on foot to their big city, which was Jerusalem. And so anyway, so we're going to tell a tale today of two sisters. And these two sisters lived in that small town of Bethany, and they had a brother who had been resurrected by Jesus, and his name was Michael Daly. <laughs> Actually, we know his name was not Michael Daly. His name was Lazarus, and the, even though he was <laughs> resurrected by Jesus. But these two sisters, their names were Mary and their names were Martha. But before we get ready to go directly into the story, I need to give you some background information because we're going to be talking about three dinner parties, and these three dinner parties are vital uh, for you to catch on. I'm going to be referring to them a lot, and I don't want you to get lost. Lost. And I'm going to be looking here because that's a little small over there. <laughs> okay, so the first dinner party. Well, first I want you to notice the table and the way that they're dining. That style of eating was called a triclinium. And that's a U-shaped table. And then they got that little gap down the middle because the servers would go back and forth through that middle in order to serve their guests. And if you notice, they are literally reclining. So when the scripture tells us Jesus reclined at table, they were literally reclining. They were leaned on their left side and they were eating from the right side. So that's this kind of setup uh, here. So it's good to just to know that that's how they did eat. They don't sit down and eat at the regular table like we do. Okay, so we've got three dinners. We've got Martha's dinner uh, in Luke 10, 38. We've got Simon's dinner. Uh, Simon was a leper. It says the leper, but obviously he's no longer a leper. Otherwise, he would not be hosting a dinner. So, <laughs> and then you've got the last um, dinner, and that was at the Pharisee's house. Okay, so now we can go directly into our first verse. 
I'm not going to ask you to stand because I do a little ad living as we go on. <clears throat> so again, we got 1038 through 42. This is from the Amplified Bible. It says, now while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village. We know that village is Bethany. And a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. So Martha's not all that bad. She was the one that gave Jesus the invi invite to come over to dinner. And so she had a sister named Mary who seated herself. She seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. Maybe she was doing something else. Maybe she was originally helping Martha in the kitchen. But when she saw Jesus come into the door, she had a laser beam focused for his feet. She was a moth to the flame. She hit the floor. She was right there with him. Um, so that's what she was doing. She was listening to Jesus and his teaching. Jesus was giving a sermon. She wanted to be right there down front best seat in the house. But Martha was overly occupied and too busy, distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve all alone? Well, we're going to get ready to see how this is going to go. I think uh, Martha expected Jesus to chastise Mary, but that's not really how that thing went. But she said, tell her then to help me to to lend me a hand and do her part along with me. But the Lord replied to her by saying, and this is lovingly when you see her name twice, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. There is need of only one <laughs> or but a few things. Mary has chosen, Mary made a choice. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. That's very important, which shall not be taken away from her. So basically Jesus says that Mary's okay. But I am a little concerned about you, Martha. <laughs> and well, let's look at what Martha did. You know, sometimes we read the scripture and we don't really, you know, evaluate what just happened. Well, first of all, she so rudely interrupted Jesus while he was giving his sermon or while he was teaching. That's the, that's the first problem. And then she comes out and she calls Mary lazy in front of all of the guests. She's supposed to be, you know, hosting this dinner and she comes out and she just, you know, calls her sister lazy. It, it, you know, she could have tapped her on the shoulder. Hey, you know, Mary, let me talk to you privately and, you know, maybe you can come and, you know, help me out in the kitchen. That didn't happen. And then third thing is she blames Jesus. She blames Jesus for, you know, jabbing on and jabbing on and keeping Mary occupied. <laughs> So <laughs> Martha's not doing too well. Only thing we can say about Martha is Martha, Martha, Martha. That's what we'll, we'll keep saying that about Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha. So these two sisters obviously have two very different personalities. And so we're going to, uh, I guess, get a little bit beyond Luke uh, 738 and look at those personalities. Now, we already know so far that Martha is the demanding, boisterous sister. And Mary is more of the humble, silent sister. And after Martha comes in to confront Jesus, not to confront Mary, Mary says nothing. She is, again, the silent, humble type. So, okay, we're going to look at our first slide. I'm not going to read the first three verses. You can read them, you know, silently while we go through it. I'm going to kind of uh, ad lib and tell you what's happening here. But first, I need to give you a little bit of background. Uh, Lazarus, the brother, had become ill, and he succumbed to the illness. Lazarus is dead. Jesus has arrived on the scene just outside of Bethany, and he is about to, well, he's going to meet with Martha, and he's going to meet with Mary. So first, Martha. Martha comes out, and when Martha comes out, they have their discussion. And during this discussion, Martha's doing good so far. Martha says, I believe that my brother is going to be raised on the last day. Martha says that I believe that whatever you ask God, he will grant it to you. And then she goes on even further to say, I believe that you are the Messiah, that you are the Son of God. You are the one that we have been waiting for. But just prior to Jesus doing his resurrection miracle, Martha interrupts again. Oh, Martha says, hold up. <laughs> I've made all these confessions. I believe in you, but you're taking this thing too far. What she said to him is, uh, oh, can I get the next, uh, the next slide, Steve? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. So Jesus is saying, take away the stone. <laughs> but Martha, the sister of the dead man, exclaimed, 
But Lord, wait. <laughs> By this time, he is decaying and throws off an offensive odor, for he has been dead four days. So Martha, you know, kind of has to give Jesus, you know, all the scientific background about, you know, decaying bodies. She stops him. She can't grasp the concept which Jesus had already told her in that discourse. We didn't read it. Jesus had already told her, I am the res resurrection. I am the life. But she couldn't get a grasp on that. But she was doing okay until she, she interrupted him that time. Now let's look at the Mary slide. Um, this first uh, um, a passage, it says, when Mary came to the place where Jesus was, so now Martha goes back in. We're still outside the tomb. Um, this is prior to Jesus actually raising Lazarus from the dead. Mary runs in to go get, Martha runs in to go get Mary. And she taps her on the shoulder. <laughs> so we know she knows how to tap. She whispers to her, we know she knows how to whisper. And she says, the teacher is looking for you. So here's the discourse between Jesus and Mary once Mary comes out to meet him outside of uh, the village of Bethany. Uh, so when she comes to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she dropped down at his feet. Wherever we can find Jesus' feet, guess who we're going to find? We're going to find Mary. <laughs> so she's saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So this is the first and only time that we will hear Martha speak in the Bible. We, she has a voice. She does speak. We know she's able to do so. But the great thing about this is when she does see Jesus, she calls him Lord. So he is her Lord and he is her Savior. So our next um, scripture here, uh, got to go into our background narrative. This was that second dinner. This was the dinner that was happening at Simon the leper's house. Uh, we're going to find Mary at Jesus' feet. We're going to find Martha serving. And we're going to find Lazarus alive sitting right next to Jesus, reclining right next to Jesus at the table. And so we'll read that. And it says, so they made him a supper and Martha served. This is like a resurrection celebration feast. Uh, so they made him a supper and Martha served. That's what she does. But Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of ointment, a very expensive ointment, rare ointment, not a fake. This is the real stuff, authentic. Mary took a pound of ointment, a pure liquid nard, a rare perfume that was very expensive, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair, and the whole house was full with the fragrance of the oil. Now, there is also another narrative or two other narratives of this story, and those are told by Matthew and also by Mark, and we're going to look at a portion of those later. Now, Matthew and Mark actually say that Mary poured the ointment over his head, but John, John, let me say also, they tell us that she poured the oil over his head. But they don't identify the woman in Mark 14, 3 and 26, 7. Only John gives us the name. Mark and Matthew drop the name off, but John is our name dropper. <laughs> and so I like John's narrative. I love that John fills in the gaps, plugs in the holes when we need a little more information. And, and just to go on, right after Mary poured this oil, whether it was on his head or whether on his feet, she caught grief. Judas broke out with, a, oh my goodness, you're wasting this oil. This could have been sold and we could have gotten money and we could have given that to the poor. John also tells us in that narrative that Judas was a thief <laughs> because he kept the money bag and he wanted that money in the bag so he could steal it. Although Mark and Matthew don't tell us anything about who this person was that was giving Mary grief uh, for anointing Jesus before his burial. And so, but Jesus is not hearing any of that. Jesus commends Mary for this beautiful thing that she has done to him in preparation of his burial. And in fact, Matthew and both Mark tells us that Jesus said that we are to memorialize this occasion because this beautiful thing, he wants it to be remembered wherever in the world the gospel is preached. And I guess my question is, how are we going to remember and memorialize this woman 
Matthew and Mark if we don't give her a name. Okay, again, we say thanks to John <laughs> for giving her that name. And so anyway, so now we're going to go to uh, our next slide, and we've got one more for, uh-oh. Uh, no, that's fine, Steve. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, and so anyway, uh, this next slide, it was listed under Mary, but it's this exact verse here. So we'll go ahead and we'll read it. This is the third dinner party. This third dinner party happens at the Pharisee. Oh, if you hear me say Simon, don't get, you know, upset because this Pharisee's name is also Simon. You know, the Bible likes to confuse us sometimes with these names. Okay, so it says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dine with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and he reclined, there we are, at the table. And behold, a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask and of ointment or perfume, and standing behind him, weeping at his feet, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And then she wiped them with her hair, the hair of her head. She kissed his feet and affectionately anointed them with the ointment or the perfume. Now, this Pharisee has invited Jesus to dinner, but he doesn't have any love for Jesus. That's not why he invited him to dinner. And in fact, he is not a very courteous host. He shows no hospitality. When Jesus came in, first of all, he should have greeted him with a double kiss, and he failed to do that. When he came in from his journey and he would have had dirty feet, he was supposed to give him a basin or something of water and offer him water to wash the dirt off of his feet. He failed to do that, and he was also supposed to anoint his his head with oil. But in comes this woman that takes care of all of that. She, she, she takes care of all the loose ends. She washes his feet with her tears. She anoints his feet and she dries her feet with his hair and she's continually kissing his feet while he is there. Now this Pharisee, he's a, a little disgusted by this loving and open and uh, loving display of warmth and welcome that Mary has shown Jesus when really he should have done it. This is his house guest. This is the guest of honor, but he has neglected all of that. And so, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, he and Jesus have a little discourse, but si uh, Jesus again commends this woman for this beautiful thing that she does. She tied up all the loose ends and therefore Jesus loosed the bonds of immorality that had this woman tangled up and tied up in a sinful life. And Jesus doesn't stop there. He goes on from there, goes on from further to openly and publicly vindicate her in front of the lawmakers, the Pharisees. He forgives her for all of her sins and he sends her forth in peace. Now again, notice that this woman is not identified. So Luke does not identify this woman. Um, but John does actually identify this woman. And we will go to John 11, 4. So we can see what John says. Remember, John is our name dropper. I guess some of the uh, investigators or uh, investigative police would say John is our snitch. So John <laughs> is the snitch and he's going to tell us. Let's see what it says. Now we got to move a little bit back in time. We're going back. Back to when Lazarus was ill. So that means that Martha already threw her dinner party and we're right here where Lazarus is ill and we have not yet come to Simon the leper's party where Lazarus sat beside him. So we're going to read this. It says, now a certain man named Lazarus was ill. He was of Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. This Mary was the one. This Mary was the one. So if there was a lineup of women, John says she's the one. It was her. He says she is the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was now sick. Now, did Lazarus have two sisters named Mary? No, he had a sister. one sister named Mary. He had another sister named Martha. And my question is, would John be now speaking in the present tense and referring to something that was going to happen in the future? Very unlikely. He is actually speaking of something that has already happened. So John, in essence, is giving us a name. He's putting a name to the face for this woman who was actually at uh, the Pharisee's uh, dinner party. Now, even though Matthew and Mark don't give us her name, 
they tell us that this woman was in possession of an alabaster flask. As well as John tells us she is in possession of an alabaster flask. Even Luke told us that she was in, had, was in possession of an alabaster flask. So let's take a look at our next slide because initially I kind of always thought that an alabaster flask or alabaster was some kind of common thing. But it is a soft kind of marble uh, and it is a vase. So she's carrying this uh, marble-like vase and carrying this thing around. And the thing that I saw was, you know, I typed in, you know, how many times does alabaster appear in the box? And so it says three times. So first of all, I'm thinking, well, it must not be that common. But as I go on to read the verses to see where it was, Guess who, <laughs> who, who neglected a name, who neglected to identify this woman? This alabaster flask only appears in their versions of these stories. And let's look at it. Matthew 26, 7. A woman, unidentified, came up to him with an alabaster flask, a very precious perfume, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. Remember, Matthew and Mark say it was poured on his head. Mark, he says, and while he was in Bethany, a guest in the house, unidentified, <laughs> in the house of Simon the leper as he was reclining at the table. A woman, he tells us she's a woman at least, uh, came with an alabaster jar of ointment. There she is again. Per and a perfume of pure nard, very costly and precious. And she broke the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Now Luke tells us that as well. He told us about the, uh, the woman, the alabaster jar, her being at his feet. Because remember, in each one of these scenarios, whether it's Luke or whether these three, we always find her at his feet. Now this sounds like Mary's MO. And if you don't know what a MO is, that's a modus operandi. That's her method of operating. So wherever we find Mary, that's her method of operating. So we are going to take this information from John and his tip, he's called the tip hotline. We're going to receive this information from John and we're going to say that this is Mary. And because this is Mary, this is going to explain how and or why she did not respond to Martha at this very first dinner party when she came out accusing her. It explains why she has this perfect desire to be at Jesus' feet. It explains to us why she is unmovable. It explains why she is so unshaken. This is why she sits. She had a previous life of sin, and Jesus took all of that away from her. He loosed the bounds of sin, and he set her free. And she could not be moved by Martha. She could not be shaken by Lazarus. Yes, Jesus freed Lazarus from his death clothes. He said, you know, set him free, take the clothes off of him. But Jesus also freed her from a spiritual death shroud. And this woman, again, would never be the same. She had seated herself in the house in the best seat next to Lazarus because she had a laser beam focus for Jesus. She was seeking, she was sitting and seeking the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is, was there. It was right at hand, but it was only, he was only there for but a short time again, which is why she anointed him prior to his burial. And here's my other question. Why has she remained so silent? Well, she had the right to remain silent. Jesus was her advocate. He spoke up for her. He spoke up in defense for her against all the moaners and all of the complainers. And I love it when she, he rebukes Judas and he says, leave her alone. <laughs> so he tells him to leave her alone. And as we close, if you'll let me paraphrase, I'd like to tell you what I think he was saying to Martha when Martha came to complain about her sister just sitting. He says, and what he said to moaning Martha, that's our song, he's moaning Martha. So anyway, so first of all, we have to say, Martha, Martha, you have to say that. Uh, Mary is in the right, the proper, and the perfect posture. Now you're asking me to send her away to come help you serve? Honey, you got some problems. <laughs> you're as busy as a bee in that kitchen, I see you. How many new recipes are you trying to turn out in one night? I see your wok going, I see your crock pot, your air fryer, and the Instapot. Girl, what are you doing? <laughs> you, Martha, you come over here and you help Mary sit. 
because I'm speaking as Jesus. I suspect Mary has another alabaster flask in her purse, in her pocketbook, in her bosom or something, and you come help her sit. Otherwise, she'll get up and start pouring on my oil on my head, on my feet, and my time has not yet come. <laughs> now, I wanted to end uh, that message or our sermon jokingly, but seriously, I do want to ask you some questions, uh, Bethany family. Where is your focus? What has you so distracted and so troubled that you can't sit down and spend some dedicated time at Jesus' feet? What's keeping you so busy that you can't sit down? When we seek things beyond, or we seek other things first before we seek the word of God to learn and to hear his word, we end up like Martha. We end up frustrated. We end up frazzled about many, many things. Let's refocus. Let's reset our sights on Jesus Christ. As Pop says, let's have that laser beam focus uh, at Jesus and, and look for his feet. Uh, but we can't focus on fleeting things uh, because those things can be taken away. Remember, Jesus told Martha that Mary made the right decision. She made the best choice, and I can't be taken away from her. Uh, but other things can be taken away. We got one more slide, Steve. The four club, there we go. Other things can be taken away from us. Jobs can be taken away. This guy is headed out the door. Exit sign. He's got his pink slip. He's got to go. Uh, homes can be sold and foreclosed. Our health, as we get older, it fails. Our beauty fades. Novelty of the new things, the clothes, the shoes, the coats, the jewelry, the novelty of those things wear off over time. The men love to get their tools, toys, and gadgets. That's a pretty cool classic car, but that thing is going to break. <laughs> and also, kids get grown and kids gr go away. That's my daughter, Allie, or DeWitt and I's daughters. Allie, that's 2020, first year in the dorm at University of Chicago. And now here we are. August or September will be her fourth year, and she's going to go away, and she's going to get her own place. So we can't be focused on those things. We have to be focused on the word, because the rooted word, makes, you know, know that I said rooted, it's gotten in deep. The rooted word of God can never be stripped or stolen from you. That's where we make our investment. And I love it when David says, I have hidden your word in my heart. And my original pastor, or my first pastor from my first church when I was just 18 or 19, his name was E.L. O'Bannon Sr. And now he's 95 years old. And like Isaac and Jacob, his eyes have dimmed. His, his vision has failed. He is blind. But he still knows his way around that word. And any question you have about anything in the scriptures, scriptures he can get you right to it. And so that is my sermon. I thank you all for listening. And we will close with a prayer before we go forth to do the Lord's Prayer. Again, if you would like to contact me or connect with me, my uh, Care Bible Study blog is carenrcnesl.wordpress.com. And my wonderful IT person, Steve, even made me the little skew thing. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and bow our head with a prayer. Lord, I pray that the aroma of Mary's perfume has filled this place today. And Lord, that we will inhale that aroma and we will be, it will become contagious for us, Lord, to fall in love with you as she did, Lord. And that we will be infected and have a laser beam focus, Lord, to sit at your feet first thing of each day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's go ahead and do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, it is in heaven, give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And the praise band is coming back. Okay, we're going to uh, try to do that uh, Mary, We Did You Weep song again. Yeah. Um, so we're going to disable the wireless mics and try these. Okay, so gotcha. take that off, try okay. this one. Roy, can you have mic off? 
Okay, Steve, do you want to do a sound check? I don't think he's wrong. Check, check. Check, Tam. Yellow mic. <laughs> Michelle. Michelle's mic. Is this on? This is a little preview of what we do on Sunday mornings, too. That's right. <laughs> We're trying to get this right. We'll see if these mics will hang in there. Is that a little better? Okay. Test, test. Test, test. All right. Oh, I'm singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Martha, don't have to moan. Martha, don't you moan. Listen to me, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Martha, you don't have to moan. Martha, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's army, they drowned in the sea, drowned in the Red Sea. Well, Jesus said, Mary, oh Mary, don't you weep. Your little sister don't have to moan no more. Martha, don't you moan. Can I get a witness to say, Mary? Oh Mary, don't you weep. Martha, don't have to moan. Martha, don't you moan. It made me somebody sick today. Oh Mary, don't you weep. Somebody here ain't got no home. Martha, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. They got drowned in the sea one drowned day. Drowned in the Red Sea. And Jesus said, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. You little sister don't have to moan no more. Martha, don't you moan. Well, if I could now. If I could. I want to tell you that I surely would now. Stand on the rock. Stand on the rock where Moses stood. Moses stood. Because Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. They got drowned in the sea one day. In the Red sea. And Jesus said, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. He said, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. And one more time, he said, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. What do you say now, Mary? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. There ain't gonna be no more weeping oh, around Mary, here. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Cause Pharaoh's army, oh, they drowned. Mary, don't you weep. And Moses, he stood on oh, that rock. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. So there ain't no more weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. I said, no, no, no more oh, weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Let me hear from my brother. And how about my sister? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. There ain't gonna be no more weeping. Oh, Mary, me. don't you weep. So, hey, hey, Martha. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. I said, how about your Martha? Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Jesus said, Martha, you don't have to moan. forget to stay after church today yes, for a few minutes all righty and we can close with a prayer uh if we can bow our heads please stay again again after church there'll be a congregational meeting Lord, we thank you that you have prepared a table before us Lord and we have reclined and we have eaten Lord we have been fed. We thank you, Lord, that you have anointed our head with, heads with oil. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless us today and further throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Tam. Okay. okay. Wasn't that fun? We had, we had a lot of fun.
All right, a couple announcements. I, I don't want you to forget that this is Denise's last week in the office coming up, so please stop by, see her, say hello. A um, lot, of, lot of years and appreciation there. Um, I didn't get anybody from the congregation that volunteered or wanted or expressed an interest in permanently replacing her. Uh, we did get a couple of volunteers for some temporary help. Um, we got Pauline and I believe Barb, right? And uh, so if we could get another couple people that are interested in maybe helping out a day, a week, or something like that, that would be great. So um, see Barb or... Uh, Pauline, if that is the case, and uh, it's probably, you know, hopefully within three or four weeks we can get a permanent replacement in there. There is out on the connection desk, there is a, a job description. Um, so if you know somebody that's interested or might be a good candidate, um, please pick one of those up and they can contact me or anybody on the, on the HR committee and we'll get that ball rolling, probably an interview, and I would say within the next week or two. So, great there. Okay, now the other announcement is we have completed our pastor search. I think everybody is wrapped attention. I see I have everybody's attention now. Um, but before I tell you who it might be or who is actually, I do want to acknowledge the people that spent a lot of time and effort on this. So if I call your name, if you'll stand up, and we get them all stood up, if we can give them a, a hand of appreciation, that'd be much appreciated for me. So Marty Braun, I think Marty's here. And this is the Pastor Search Committee that uh, they had volunteered for. Serena pa Hassler isn't here today. Dottie, did I see Dottie? Uh, yes, Dottie Jeremiah. And Nancy McLean, there she is. Gary Mosman, playing up. Gary and Howard, Howard Saley. Evelyn, don't want to forget you. And Mary, you want to stand up, please? Hey, you, you're there. Okay, and uh, those are our pastor search committee. I must I mean they did a fabulous job of uh, laying out the qualifications, getting through them. So much appreciated from that group. If you can give them a hand, it'd be great. So. Okay. All right. So after it left the Pastor Search Committee, it went on to the HR Committee, which did their own due diligence and questioning and so forth. And so in addition to Howard and Gary, we also had Trudy. Did I see Trudy here? Yes, Trudy's back there. Dennis Strife and Jim Winter um, and myself. So give those uh, people a hand also. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, as they like to say, effective August 1st, our new pastor leading us will be uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve Barrett. Um, Steve is currently a pastor at the Carlisle United Methodist Church uh, in Carlisle, Illinois. Um, he has, uh, in the process of leaving the Methodist denomination, and has uh, moved, actually he's moved his over ordination over to the Global Methodist Church. Um, so uh, he's looking forward to coming here. All the things are ready. Um, he is a family man. He's got uh, a son that's 24 uh, and a daughter, I believe, is 14, and a son is 12. And his wife, his name is Kay. And, uh, and I believe we have a video, Steve, right? Yes. Um, what's a little welcome from Steve? You put together a little Good video morning, from us. Bethany so, Church. If you hadn't figured it out by now, I am Reverend Steve Barrett. Pastor Steve or just Steve. And starting August 1st, I will be your new pastor. I'll be honest with you, I am excited beyond words uh, to start this new chapter in my life and in my family's lives and in your lives. Uh, I am looking forward to, to get hitting the ground running and just getting started and getting at it. Um, I thought this was a good opportunity uh, to share just a couple of brief things with you uh, regarding who I am, who my family is, and what you might expect from us. Uh, and let me start off by saying, first of all, thank you to the leadership of this church. You guys have made some tough decisions over the last few months. And, uh, and I'm thankful for my friend Gary uh, and the rest of the pastor search committee. Uh, when Gary reached out to me some time ago now, uh, who, who'd have thunk it that we would be here today? Um, I'm also thankful to the rest of your leadership team, Scott, Chris, Kim, and the others 
who have all had a hand in this relationship being built. I am excited to be here this morning as uh, you are listening to this. I am breaking the news to my church. Uh, and I know there are some who have taken it very hard uh, as they've heard the news already. Um, but we're going to end that season well. And uh, then I'm going to go on vacation for a little bit uh, and come back refreshed to you in August. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm married. My wife Kay is a professional businesswoman. Uh, and we have three kids. Uh, my, our, our oldest, Chris, is uh, 24, and he is a band director in Liberty, Illinois, up near Quincy. Uh, and then we've got our two youngest, Savannah and Parker, who are both attending school at First Baptist Academy in O'Fallon. Uh, they are also very excited to start time here uh, and are looking forward to being on the ground floor as we start building a youth program, uh, which I'm also looking forward to. Uh, personally speaking, I am very theologically conservative. Uh, I believe the Bible is the inspired word of God handed down to mankind. I do not believe it has changed over the time that we have received it. Uh, as much as society and culture would like us to think that it has changed, it is timeless. Uh, you will find that I believe the Bible is what the Bible says. Uh, I am also not only theologically conservative, but I am also, and I'm going to give you some homework here so you can look up the words if you don't already know them, I am also Arminian evangelical, and I am not in a bad mood about it. Uh, I believe in the teachings of John Wesley. In fact, the last part of my vacation in July will be a Wesleyan heritage tour in England. So I'm going to come back filled up with some good Wesleyan heritage. Uh, we're going to, we're going to hit this thing running. I've already been communicating with the leadership team uh, and they, I think, are getting a taste of what to expect. I'm coming in with a lot of energy, uh, but I'll be honest with you. This is something that isn't done by one person or even a small group of people. What we are going to build here together is just that, something that we build together. I'm gonna need your help, gonna need your support. As I become your pastor, you guys are gonna have to teach me some of the Bethany ways as I teach you some of the Pastor Steve ways. And I think we're all gonna get along just fine. I'm not gonna keep you too much longer. Uh, I am excited for my family to meet all of you. I'm excited for you to meet my family, uh, my kids especially, who I was concerned about. But my kids are really excited to start church here and, uh, and I'm looking forward to this. We're back, we're in the church on August 1st. Uh, we're gonna be moving soon into Millstadt. Uh, and I measured the distance according to MapQuest from driveway to the church is 11 minutes. So don't think of Millstadt as being too far out. Uh, again, my heartfelt thanks to your leadership team, to our leadership team, as we get the ball rolling here. And uh, if you have anything that you ever want to talk about, uh, I know it's probably cliche to say that I have an open door policy, but I have an open door policy. Um, come talk to me. I want to hear your hearts. If there's something that you want to do that you envision the church participating in, I want to hear that. Uh, and I'll bring the energy and the backing and we'll, we'll get this thing done together. So again, thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to what God has put together here. Uh, the, the fact that God has put us all together, uh, I think is something wonderful. And as I often say, when you give God, uh, when you do the right thing at the right time for the right reason, you give God something to bless. So my prayer is this morning that we give God something to bless. Let me pray for us uh, before I turn things over to your leadership team and Scott. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this new season. 
as the Bethany Church and the Barrett family come together in this godly relationship. Lord, bless our time together. Bless this congregation. Bless our comings and goings. Bless the things that we do for the kingdom. And Lord, as we step out in faith, as we do the things that you have called us to do, we know that we go in your will, your perfect, powerful goodwill. Let us forever be reminded that you walk before us, behind us, beside us, above and below us. And we pray all of these things in your son, Jesus Christ's holy name. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. All right. I know Steve will probably watch this later, so uh, thank you, Pastor Steve, and a nice round of applause there. Appreciate that. (laughs) Um, There is out in the connection table uh, a bio from Steve if you want to look at it and see what his hobbies are and what his professional background and so forth is. It's, It's interesting reading, so please pick a copy of that on your way up, and you'll get to know Pastor Steve a little better. Um, like he said, August 1st is the start date. He's going to be in England for the next month uh, doing some, uh, a little bit of, uh, shall I say, downtime, which I, I think he needs. Um, I think we all could use some downtime. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to him getting started. I know he has been, the last couple of weeks, it's been uh, like trying to hold back a team of horses heading for the barn. I mean, he's wanting to get going and started. And, uh, and I kept having to say, Steve, hold on. Wait, just wait, wait. You know, you need your time off. You need to finish up at the church you're at. You know, leave them in a good position before you turn our attention to us. But he is so ready to come here that uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, a lot of fun. Um, just a reminder, though, that as Steve said, uh, we have a lot of work in front of us yet. This isn't just now we're, we're done and we can turn it over to the pastor and, and things are going to take off. It's really up to us to do that. So. I think the first few months that Steve's here, uh, we all need to get our feet on the ground, understand how we contribute to moving this congregation forward in, you know, in a productive growth manner and, and, and be participants. So I encourage you all to pray about it. Think about how you're going to fit into new roles of the church because hopefully we're going to be more enthusiastic, more evangelical, and uh, more involved with the community and so forth. And that's going to take, that's going to take work on our part. So... Looking forward to that. Any questions? Big amen, Big amen is right. <laughs> All right, I won't hold you any longer. You all have a, a great Sunday afternoon, and uh, hope to see you all here next week.